1553, an Italian named Battista della Porta wrote a book titled Magiae Naturalis, or Natural Magic. In this book, he described what he called a camera obscura. This ancestor of all cameras was a darkened room with a small hole in one wall. When the hole was uncovered, rays of light entered from the outside. The light from outside, projected through the pinhole, formed an image on the opposite wall of the room. The term camera obscura means darkened room or chamber. It was really a pinhole camera, and it included the four basic parts of any camera of today. The room was the dark box or camera body. The wall opposite the pinhole was the screen upon which the image was formed. Its counterpart in a photographic camera is the ground glass or surface of film or plate upon which a photograph is made. The operator's hand served as a means to cover and uncover the pinhole. Its counterpart is the shutter in a modern camera. The small pinhole focused the rays of light to give a fairly sharp, clear image, just as the lens of a camera forms an image on the ground glass or on the film. The pinhole admitted rays of light in a small beam from each point on an object and projected the beams on the wall. It can be said that the image is formed by an infinite number of dots of light reflected from an infinite number of points on the object. About the year 1568, a Venetian by the name of Daniel Barbaro replaced the pinhole with a lens. The lens was made of glass, just as are those of today. It was usually mounted on the geometric center of the front end of the camera body. The axis of the lens was perpendicular to the end of the camera body on which it was mounted. A lens collects many more light rays than the pinhole from each point on the object and brings them together to form an image of each point on the object. Because the lens can gather many more rays of reflected light from each point of the object, the image formed by a lens is much brighter than the image formed by a pinhole. With a lens, the distance from lens to image plane varies with the distance to the object. To get sharp images of objects at different distances in front of his lens, Barbaro used a movable screen so he could vary the distance from the lens to the image plane. The basic principles of the camera obscura are used in all cameras. The simplest type, the box camera, closely resembles Barbaro's camera obscura. As an example, this popular box camera is made of metal and fabric, which form an opaque, light-tight camera body. To make it simple in operation, the distance from the lens to the image plane, that is, to the film, is fixed. For this reason, the box camera can only get a sharp image if the objects are beyond a distance of about 10 feet from the lens. Aerial cameras are rugged and light in weight, like the box camera. They have a fixed lens to film distance. Aerial cameras are designed to photograph objects located at a far distance or infinity, not for close-up work. Images are sharp when the camera is used for its design purpose. View cameras have a wood or metal camera body. They have extension bellows made of leather or flexible plastic. The materials of which these cameras are built meet the requirements of being opaque and light-tight. The bellows provides a means for adjusting the distance from the lens to the image plane, so that either close objects or those far away may be brought into sharp focus on the screen. In that respect, the view camera employs one of Barbaro's improvements, the ability to bring objects into focus by changing the lens-to-screen distance. Another way to have an adjustable lens to film distance is to mount the lens in a barrel that is moved in and out for focusing. 
While there are many other types of camera bodies, each of them has a light tight compartment that corresponds to the darkened room of the ancient camera obscura. The operator's hand over the pinhole was the first shutter. It did what every camera shutter must do, which is to stop the passage of light when it is closed and to admit light when it is opened. Anything that will let light pass through the lens to the screen when you want it to do so, and for the required length of time, serves as a shutter. The old-time photographer often used the lens cap as a shutter. And occasionally, you found him making the dark slide of a plate holder serve as a shutter. But for accurate control, particularly for short exposures, a mechanical shutter is easier to use. In fact, it is a necessity. One of the most common types of shutters is the between the lens shutter, which gets its name from the fact that it is placed between the front and rear cells of the lens. The shutter has several thin overlapping metal leaves that swing out away from the center line of the lens to admit light, stay open for the required time, swing back into place to cut off the light. A small mechanism like that of a watch times the operation of the shutter. On some between the lens shutters that you will use, you will find a cocking lever. Depressing this lever puts tension on the shutter spring and winds up the spring operated mechanism. Then when you are ready to take the picture, you use the release. The leaves of the shutter may be operated by hand using either the cable release or the release lever. This method of operation permits the making of long exposures. To control this operation, the index is set on either T for time or B for bulb. If on T, you press the release once to open, then once again to close. If on B, you press the release to open, Hold it down for the exposure time you need, then let go and the shutter closes. For shorter exposures, spring tension is used to open and close the leaves. To select the exposure time, the speed index is set to the speed required. The mechanism operates the leaves to open and stay open for the required length of time, then to close. Some between the lens shutters are of the self-cocking type, requiring only the operation of the shutter release. Between the lens shutters work well up to moderately high exposure speeds and for flash photography. They are used on cameras of all sizes and qualities. Another common type of mechanical shutter is the focal plane shutter. This shutter is placed just ahead of the plane on which the image is formed. It is usually a curtain that moves across the picture area. Slits in the curtain allow the light to reach the film as a slit moves across. The curtain of the focal plane shutter has several slits, each of a different width. The narrower the slit, the less light can pass to the film and the shorter the exposure. The operator can adjust the tension of the spring that moves the curtain. The greater the tension, the faster the slit moves, and the shorter the time permitted for the light to get to the camera screen, that is, to the film. The numerous combinations of spring tensions and slit widths provide a great range of speeds, that is, of exposure times. The wide range of speeds makes the focal plane shutter extremely flexible. Because its range runs to high speed values, it is particularly useful for high speed photography. Regardless of type, the shutter combines with the lens to control the amount of light that gets to the screen of the camera. On most cameras, in general use, the distance from the lens to the image plane can be controlled to focus the image. But a camera is only a curiosity, like the ancient camera obscura, 
unless we have some way to retain the image and obtain a permanent picture. The image can be made into a permanent picture by using a light sensitive material such as photographic film in the image plane. The film must have some sort of holder to protect it from light and to keep it in position while the image is being exposed on it. Each size and shape of film requires a film holder to suit. One common type of sensitive material is cut film. It is a flat sheet of film about the size of the image to be preserved. This light tight cut film holder is loaded with two sheets of cut film, one on each side. Dark slides protect the film from the light until it is exposed in the camera. The film holder is held in position on the camera back. The dark slide is removed when you are ready to make the exposure. Another type of film holder is the cut film magazine. This one holds a dozen films, but there are magazines which can take 24 cut films. Many cameras use roll film. When the film is out of the camera, it is protected from light by opaque paper that is rolled up with the film. The roll of film with its protective paper is stretched across the image plane in the back of the camera with the film toward the lens. Some cameras, like this 16 millimeter motion picture camera, have film in magazines which protect the film while it is out of the camera. The film is ready for use when the magazine is placed in the camera. In professional motion picture cameras, the film is generally held in a magazine with the unexposed film feeding out of one light tight section and the exposed film feeding into another section. The magazine is mounted on the camera and the film threaded into position for exposure in the film gate, where the film perforations are engaged by a claw mechanism. Slow motion shows how the film is pulled down one small section at a time. The film remains at rest during its exposure. Moves, rests, moves, rests, many times a second. Shutters in motion picture cameras have blades which cut off the light as the film is moved into place for individual exposures. The blades clear the aperture to expose the film. Just as there are many types of cameras, so there are many types of film and film holders. But the basic functions of all holders are to protect the film from light when outside the camera and to hold it in place at the image plane during the exposure. From the time long ago when the camera obscura was described by Della Porta, the camera has gone through many changes and has had many improvements. But in all cameras, there are just four basic parts. The dark box or camera body, opaque and light tight. The lens to collect the light from the object and focus the image on the camera screen or film. The shutter to control the amount of light that gets to the film. The present forms in general use are between the lens shutters and focal plane shutters. And finally, the screen or film on which the image is formed. No matter what the camera may be like in construction, it will have these four basic parts. The camera body, the lens, the shutter, and the screen on which the image is formed. With a good understanding of how they work together, you are on your way for a photo rate.